Hello, I'm Darrell Ford, and I want to demonstrate to you how we set up the, the pieces, the fixturing, and measure the internal components in a turbine. Begin with, we have what we call an A502L. This is where we place the laser. The laser goes into this holder, and we can adjust the, the, the vertical and the horizontal angle of the laser. When we put this holder there, in the, in the, there we use a 502 or 501 sweep unit that has a, a, basically a dial indicator. So we just sweep this around and we get the holder in the center of the bore and we put the laser in there. The laser is then in the center. On the other end, the other reference bore, we're going to use an A502. The 502 holds the T218 target so we can steer the laser beam to zero. Again, when we put this in there, we sweep that in with the 501 unit, so it's in the center, so when we put the target in here, the target's in the center, we can just steer the laser beam to zero. We set these on by the use of what we call Pac-Man magnets. These Pac-Man magnets go on the split line of the, of the turbine, and we stretch a piece of angle iron across there for these to mount on. Once we have that set up, then we have what we call a 1511 one bore target. We have various lengths of legs, so we'll set the length of legs for the OD of the, or the ID of the, be the bearing, and we put on the target on here, and we use a 1308 readout, so we can measure three points in that bore and we can measure the alignment of the internal components to the, the, the reference bores of the turbine. So with that, let's get started. We're going to start out using the Pac-Man magnets. We call these Pac-Man magnets because one has a straight slot and the other one kind of looks like a Pac-Man. This will swivel. swivel. So when we put these on here, on this, the shell of the turbine, we're going to put these with the slot facing us and about an inch, inch and a half behind the bore. So those are mounted there like that. It makes no difference whether the straight slot is on the left or the right. As long as you have one of each, you don't want to have two Pac-Man magnets or two straight slots. Once those are mounted, we take the angle iron and slide this into the slots in the magnets. And then we take the Allen wrench and we're going to tighten the straight slot first. The reason this has a straight slot and a Pac-Man is this angle iron could have some twist to it. So when we tighten this, that one may not be quite parallel. So we tighten the straight slot first so the, the Pac-Man magnet will, will go to the contour of the, the angle. We want to tighten these the set screws, and we want them tight. We don't want them just snug. We want them tight. Okay. Now, one of the things that you have to be aware of is, say, they have to be tight, and we want to make sure this angle is, is not at an angle. It can be at somewhat a little bit of an angle, but you want to make sure it's not at a gross angle. It's, it should be real, reasonably parallel with the edges of the bore. Okay, then we take the 502 and we mount this on the angle. And we take the tape measure. We want to get this reasonably close. Now when we set this up, these are built, so when we put this angle in here and we have this holder in the center of its travels, in other words, these, are, these knobs here, will, I can move this up and down these knobs, I can move this side to side. We have it pretty much in the center, so when I put this on here, it's very close to, this, to the center line of the, 
of the turbine. So we need to get it side to side. So I want to measure from each side. So I'm approximately equal distance from both sides of this to the edge. And then take my Allen wrench and tighten the holder. Okay. Now we're going to take the 501 sweep unit and insert that into the bore. Now one thing I haven't mentioned about this sweep unit, this pivots here. So where this pivots is exactly where we're measuring at. So that's the cell plane. So we're not, we're not measuring out here and putting the target back here. Insert the rod, the activator, and the tip. Now what I like to do is I like to leave a little bit of the rod hanging below. So that gives me, so I'm sweeping in a straight line. And then I'm gonna bring this up so I'm working the plunger about, about halfway. So I have about 50% each way. Now in here, I'm going to turn, turn this on. When I'm sweeping this, I want to make sure I have always measuring the same point. So I want to mark my points where I don't want to measure right at the top edge one time and down here next time. I want to always measure on the same point. So on the left side, I'm going to make this zero. When I take this to the right side, I'm going to use the, the adjusters here and I'm going to take out half of that error. Zero. Now when I'm doing up and down, I want to take it right to zero. Now many times, you'll be setting up to what they call the oil slinger, the seal. So they'll measure that to the rotor, and it'll be an offset. So you want to, you want to set this up to the offsets that they give you, not zeros. Zero, zero, and zero. So now I have the holder set to the, to the, to the bore. So I'm gonna take out the sweep unit. I'm gonna put in the T218T. And I want the cable on the bottom the cable always goes on the bottom. And then I'm going to connect the 1307. And now we'll move down to the other end and we'll set up the A502L and mount the laser in there and course adjust the laser. So we set up the 502L very similar to the same way we set up the 502. We're going to put the Pac-Man magnets on the shell so the slot's facing away. We want them facing the same direction as the other ones. We want them facing that way. And we're going to put a piece of angle iron through here.
And again, we're gonna tighten the straight slot first, and then we'll tighten the Pac-Man. And I'm gonna put two more magnets behind these two. They all have to face the same direction. I said when we were setting them up, you tighten the straight slot first, and then you tighten the Pac-Man magnet. If you should do it in reverse, if you tighten the Pac-Man magnet first, then if this angle iron has rocked a little bit, we're gonna tighten onto that angle at that tip. And when we tighten the straight slot, you're actually gonna pick that magnet up and it's not gonna be a stable situation. Now we're gonna take the 502L. I'm gonna mount this onto the angle. And again, we're gonna take a tape measure. And we're gonna put this eyeball or tape measure centered. Of course, align it. Okay, this is a support arm. So when we put the laser in there, because angle iron is susceptible to temperature change, this can move. So we put a support on here to minimize that. As you're doing alignments, you're gonna to wanna to keep your eye on it. All right, the 706 goes in here. We have nominal settings on here for the vertical, this being the vertical micrometer, this the horizontal micrometer. We set these at nominal settings. What that does is that brings that beam out reasonably square to this face or parallel to these, these ODs of these targets. There's a level on the top. There's also a level on the bottom. We want the top, meaning verticals up and the line up and down. So everything, the writing is correct. So when we insert this in here, we push this in and we want this level from side to side. It may not be level this way, we can't control that, but side to side, we want it level and tighten the thumb screw. And then we're, tight, we're gonna plug in the, the battery pack and turn this on. Now I need to course align this so the beam goes into the target down there. I haven't swept it in yet because I have to course align it first. Okay, when we see the beam on the target down there, we have an adjustment on the bottom and on the top, so we can tilt, course align, tilt this whole holder. So I'm gonna loosen one, tighten the other until we're somewhere as close to the center. And what that does is it's gonna tip these magnets a little bit because of the pressure. So we're gonna reduce that and retighten the Pac-Man magnet. And then I'm gonna loosen a magnet and I'm gonna slide this, the angle of this until the beam's going into the right side to side. Loosen one, tighten the other. So now I have numbers on the readout. I know I'm going into the target down there. So now I'm gonna take the 706 out of here, turn it off and take it out and I'm gonna put the sweep unit in, and I'm gonna sweep this just like I did the target holder. So I'll put the rod in here. I'm gonna zero on the left side like I did down there. I'll bring it over to this side, and again, using the horizontal adjustments, I'm gonna take out half of the air. Zero. 
So now I have this swept in. I'm gonna remove the sweep unit. I'm gonna reinsert the 706. Turn it on. Now I'm gonna use the micrometers and I'm gonna steer until both numbers are zero. My vertical number is zero and my horizontal number is zero. Okay, now they're both zero. So now I have the laser in the center of the bore here and I have the target in the center, I have the laser steered, so we're passing right through the center of the, the reference bores. Now I can set up the one bore target and I can measure the internal components. Okay, now we've got the laser set up in the center of this bore and the target set up in the center of the opposite bore, both reference bores, and we've got the laser adjusted to zero. So we have a center line established. Now we're going to set up the 1511 one bore target so we can measure the internal components. We'll start out by mounting the 1519 target onto the bracket on the little set screw here. Turn it on. And we want to make sure this is tight. We don't want this coming unscrewed as we're rotating this target taking measurements, so it, we want to make sure it's, it's tight. Okay, now what we have to do, we have to measure the bores. We, we want to set the leg length according to the bores. So I'm going to measure this one. And that's an 18 inch bore. This is an 18 inch bore. So the legs, we have set up legs for both of them. So with 18 inch bore, we want a nine inch radius leg length. So measuring from the center of this target, we're gonna pick out the right configuration of legs. And these legs, We'll telescope. We have the short ones, so this will. We have a little bit of adjustment here. If we need longer, we have longer telescoping legs, and then we have extensions that we can also add to these to get the right combination to accommodate the the bore size. We're going to screw the leg on. And then we have two different tips that we can use. I like using the ball end tip. If we're using, if we're using a, measuring a blade ring in there, then we'll have to use this longer one that we can get between the blades. Put the tip on here. And now I want to adjust this out until I'm nine inches. And that's not enough, so I need a little extension on here. So I'm going to take that off and I'm going to add a short extension. And then put the tip back on. So this is just going to get you close, so we'll fine tune this when we get it in the bore. But, but we're going to do the same thing on the side now. I need another short ex extension. Okay, when I do the vertical, I just simply come to the center of the red line or the, the, the lights and measure. When I do the horizontal, I kind of have to find somewhere side to side. Like I say, it's just to get us close when we get in the bore. We'll fine tune it. So, so we, now we have the target mounted now we're going to mount the 1308 readout. And I can mount that readout either on the top or on this side over here. And then I want to plug it into the port. Okay. 
Okay, so now I have the target, target set up. What I want to do, I, because this laser can drift a little bit, so I always want to make sure before I take any measurements that we're still at zero on our target. So I'm going to steer it back to zero a little bit here. It's not, it's not uncommon for this to drift a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to get in and we're going to start taking measurements. All right, before we take our measurements, we always want to check our reference, make sure we're still at zero. And then we're going to get in. So we're going to put this in here and we're going to rest the, the leg on the left side. And we have a brace here. And on the top of the 1308, there's a button that says mode. We're going to push that mode button. That puts us into horizontal mode. So the target now is reading the horizontal axis. We're not actually getting numbers, we're getting lines. And I want to adjust this target up and down until I have one or two lines, maybe three lines. But the way I'm going to adjust it up and down is just loosen the thumb, thumb screw and, and slide her in and out until I have one or two lines. And I'm sweeping in and out. When I come back here, I've got two lines on the right side. I'm sweeping it back to the front. I got zero. Now I have two lines on the left side. So I know I'm really close to being in the center of the target horizontally. I'm going to push the mode button again. That's going to put me into the vertical mode. Now here I'm reading minor, minus 313. So I'm going to adjust this out this leg out until I'm a little closer to zero. I don't like to be 300 thousandths off, but so now I'm at minus 30, 32. I'm going to sweep this in and out until I get my most plus number. So now I'm reading minus 29, minus 30, minus 32. So I'm going to sweep it back, minus 29, minus 32. So minus 29 is my highest pos positive number. So I'm going to get there and I'm going to zero that readout. So now I'm double check it. I'm zero, minus two, zero, minus one, minus two. So now I've zeroed it. Now I'm going to just swing this right around 180 degrees. So I'm on the other side. And I'm going to turn the target so it faces. And I'm going to sweep this in and out until I get my most plus number again. Now I'm reading plus 127, 128, 130, 131, 132, 133, 132, 130. So 133 plus 133 is my most positive number. So we need to remember that to rate, rate that down. Minus, plus 133. Now I'm going to stand it up and do the same thing. I'm going to sweep this in and out until I get my most plus number. Now I'm at plus 22, plus 25, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 35, 36, 37, 36, 35, so plus 37 is my most plus number. So now let's do the math on that. We'll do the math on that so we can determine how far off that bore is from the center line. So I have a half a bore. Looking at the target, the way I was facing the laser beam, like I'm standing behind the target looking into the laser beam, I zeroed on the left side. On the right side, I had plus 133 thousandths, and on the bottom, I had plus 37 thousandths. 
So the way we calculate how far off that bore is, is we want to find if I made all of these zero, I'm just saying, actually, I'm going to take half of that, which would be uh, plus 66 and a half or 67 thousandths. So that means that bore is 66 and a half thousandths too far this way. It needs to go that way. And because if, if I centered it up, I, I should see minus 66 and a half all the way around. So that's showing this is Twenty nine and a half thousandths, it's low. It needs to go up. Twenty nine and a half thousandths. So now let's measure the other bore. You always want to make sure your reference bore hasn't changed. So if it has, which is not uncommon, you want to tweak it back to zero before you take your measurements. And again, I'm going to place this on the left side. Okay, sweep this in and out until I get my most plus number, minus 124, 122, 124. Minus 122 is my most plus number, so I'm going to make that zero. Sweep that in and out and make sure I'm a zero. Oh, I don't want any plus numbers. Zero. Swipe the swing it around. And tie it over. My most plus number plus sixty nine. No, plus sixty three. Sixty two. Plus 62 is my most plus number, plus 63. I'm going to sweep this, stand it up. My most plus number is minus 42. So I had plus 63 on the right and minus 42 on the bottom. Let's do the math. So on the first bore, we were plus 61 and a half thousandths to the right. So we're going to call that bore one. The right side was plus 61 and a half and the bottom was was minus 27 and a half. Just so we don't forget. Now we'll calculate this bore. Again, I zeroed on the left side. On the right side, I had plus 63. And on the bottom, I had minus 42. So if we do the math again, we want to cut that 63 in half, divide it by 2, plus 31 and a half thousandths. So that's too far to the right. It needs to go to the left. So now bore 2 is plus 31 and a half on the right. And on the bottom, because it's minus 42, we want to read 31 and a half. So the bottom is actually minus 73 and a half thousandths. It needs to go up 73 and a half thousandths to become that number. So the bottom is minus 73 and a half thousandths. That pretty much concludes how you would measure the internal components of the turbine, how you set everything up and take the readings.
All right, now we've measured the internal components of the turbine. Uh, there's one other way that we could do this. If something should happen to the, to the target or uh, the, the fixture, whatever, and you still, you could still go in and take measurements, we could actually move this angle. We wouldn't be able to monitor our, our reference anymore, but we could move this angle up to the next bore and actually using the knobs adjust with the 218 target in there until it read zero, and then remove the target and take the sweep unit and sweep it in and basically get our numbers that way. Or you could put it in there, sweep it in, and put the target in and see what the target tells you either way. So that pretty much concludes the, uh, the alignment of the turbine, but there's a couple of things I'd like to mention here. One of the things I haven't mentioned earlier is this 218 target is a flip target. In other words, if I flip this lever and I flip it back, if I flip it out, the light will go right on through that target. So in other words, I could flip this lever and I could go on and measure bores beyond that target. I flip it back in, then I, I'm reading the target again. For, uh, air turbulence. Air turbulence, uh, if you're shooting long distances, when you have different temperatures of air passing between the, la the laser beam and the, and the target, the light like doesn't like to pass through that different air temperature. It's kind of like driving down the road and you see the heat waves coming off the road. Everything's blurry because the light waves don't like to pass through that. We well, have the same condition uh, in the shop environment. Somebody opens a door and you have a warm, warm or a cool air pass through there. The light doesn't like to pass through that change in temperature, so the beam will fluctuate. If it isn't too bad, you can just increase the sample size or the averaging and the readout. You can to basically take, take averages and that will average out that fluctuation. If it's real bad, you can set up fans. Uh, and you know, if you read the manual, look in the manual, the manual tells you if you set up a fan and it gets worse, set up more fans. The object is to homogenize the air. Another thing is blinking lights. So you're working on this, we're pulsing the beam, so the, beam, the target is looking for that pulse of energy, that pulse of light. So if an overhead crane happens to go over and it has a blinking light on it, that target could see that blinking light and it's going to try to read that as well as the pulsed light. So uh, you, you're not going to be able to work if there's any blinking lights going on and, and it's affecting your readings. So, well, with that said, that pretty much concludes the, the turbine alignment.